I've assembled uh, a bunch of the uh, things I use for making platonic solids and my archive of little parts here on the table. Um, and just a little overview before I explain something about cutting angles. Um, these platonic solids here are all sort of made out of flat materials that are made into hollow forms. Uh, like for instance this one here. Um, they're the triangles that make them up look like this and they fit together um, but they have to have a bevel put on them like that and the question is how do you determine that angle so I want to show you that but just before I do I just want to show you that you know as I go through this kind of process I have all kinds of tools that I use um, you know there are set squares that I use large and small that come in math sets like this this is an old antique math set a uh, compass is something I often use, um, and you can use a compass like this, or a nicer one, a little bit nicer like this, uh, or a really nice math set like this can be useful. And of course there's rulers, and then there's a homemade large trammel set that I can make large circles with. And then I'm going to be using uh, adjustable bevels here to record um, angles and transfer them to saws. Um, I also have patterns, most of the platonic, so all of the platonic solids are made out of triangles um, or pentagons or squares. And every time I make one of these objects, uh, I'll often, uh, you know, make a pattern. So I will make one, in this case, a hexagon, which isn't part of a platonic solid, but some other mathematical solids use hexagons. So maybe I could use a, a pentagon as an example. Uh, so this pentagon I can use to trace onto other materials and make cuts um, to make several pieces that I need. Um, and then every time I do that, I save it. So I have, you know, a whole pile of pentagons and a whole pile of hexagons, a whole pile of triangles. I use triangles a lot. And then a few squares. I don't use squares quite that often. And then there's also things like templates. This is a big triangular template I use when I'm carving solid isosahedra with a chainsaw. I just nail that onto the log and then these faces are used to guide the chainsaw uh, at these angles. And even here is a, a piece of a part for an isosahedron that came out of a just a, a log slice. Um, so the outside shape looks sort of like this and then we'll make a form something like this so it all cracks and deforms just held together with staples. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is uh, trying to um, record this angle here and to do that I often will um, assemble just five triangles, uh, uh, five equilateral triangles and then that will give me the angle right here. Okay, um, Maybe I can put this into the tripod here to show you. This will help a little bit if I keep this steady and I can have my two hands. So I'm just going to show you briefly what I'm going to do and then in another video I'm going to show you uh, in more detail. So to put these together like this um, I need to know what this angle is. Okay. So in order to do that um, if I can find what this angle is and then cut it in half that's what this is. <laughs> I knew that would happen. Phone's ringing, I'm not going to answer it. So, if I have five triangles like this, and I can put them together just by, you know, cutting. Is this a spare one? Yeah. Just, just cutting um, a hexagon and taking one triangle out and cutting these into triangles and just taping them together. This, I think, is just scored and then taped. But if I tape them together and sit them down on a flat surface, right, and tape it together and do it really accurately, this is the angle I need, okay? Which it will be easier to hold on this. This is the angle. So I can take um, an adjustable bevel. An adjustable bevel is a tool that can angle hold an angle, take an angle and hold it, lock an angle, so I can hold that angle like that. And this is the angle here that I need to bisect 
to create this um, angle on this surface. So then I just take this angle and I put it on a piece of paper or what I often do is I just trace it onto a board. One of these will do it probably. And then I use a, a mathematical process to bisect the angle or cut it in half, which I use a compass for. And in that angle, let's say this is the angle I need, I can, I can move this over here like this on this tool, find that, get that angle, transfer it to this tool, and then I can take this angle on this tool to a saw and set the saw up to this angle, and then I can cut this angle with the saw using this angle that I got from this form. Okay, so that's just in a nutshell what I'm doing and the arrangement of tools and various methods that I've used for making these kinds of things. And uh, you can see that process works quite nicely, you know, for five triangles in a isosahedral form. But I think somewhere here I can show you how to make a dodecahedron. Um, you could just take five or three um, pentagons and uh, tape them edge to edge. And then, then I could take this angle here and record that on board and bisect it to make the bisecting angle for this. Okay, I don't have a sample of that. Um, but then you just cut all your parts and then work them out. Okay. So here, actually here's an example of, of a, a pentagon that has that beveled angle on it. And that's probably how I found it. Okay, that angle there. Okay, it's half of this angle. Okay, hope that makes some sense. Sorry about the phone call.